Domino, also Bobby Starnovich as well. We thank you so much for tuning in to the pay-per-view. On the stage right now, we have all four winners who were victorious tonight on the pay-per-view portion. To my left, I have the Haymaker, David Hay with the victory over Joe Fournier. Round of applause for David Hay. Welcome back to the ring. Also, the man to my immediate left, a victory over the former Cruiserweight Heavyweight Champion of the World, the International Boxing Hall of Famer. He is now 2-0 as a professional boxer, and he looked fantastic tonight, ladies and gentlemen. The Phenom, Vitor Belfort. To my right, this young man has dealt with his fair share of adversity and he has come out with a massive win. This fight was captivating, it gave you ebbs and flows, uh, he couldn't even see, but he dug down deep and got a win. He punches his ticket to being the number one contender for a world championship at 130 pounds. The entire country of Ireland should be so proud of this young man. Joe Carroll, ladies and gentlemen, with the win over Andy Vincent. And talk about highlight reel finishes. My goodness, was that lethal by the former UFC middleweight champion of the world. He turned back the clock and reminded me of that when he was knocking out Forrest Griffin and wiping out guys in his rare of dominance, his reign of dominance in the UFC. Comes out, dispatches of Tito Ortiz. I guess he doesn't even get paid by the round because it didn't last that long. Ladies and gentlemen, the spider, Anderson Silva. I'm going to start off with David Hay and David for you coming back into the ring after your layoff at 40 years of age. How good did you feel tonight? Obviously Joe Fournier, what a tough competitor. He gave his all. It's not easy to be able to deal with your power punches, believe me. But what was that like in back in the ring? It felt really good. It was nice to be back, as I said, three years out of the ring. I haven't hit a bag, had the no, no sparring. So it was nice. I had four weeks of preparation for this. When I got in there, I felt fresh, I felt sharp, my time felt good, and I was able to enjoy myself. Normally I go out there trying to knock people out straight away. But I tried to enjoy myself, I wanted to give eight rounds of good entertainment, and I think people enjoyed it. So for you, it, I mean, was there any sign of... The opposite to these two. <laughs> For you, did you feel any ring rust? Did you did it take a couple rounds to get going again? Because the one thing about it is that you got into your rhythm rather quickly, and I didn't see any signs of ring rust. No, I, I felt really good. I felt sharp. My timing felt good. I could see the shots coming. I was, I've got caught with a few shots here and there, but you know I hadn't done much sparring for this. Usually, I do probably 60, 70, 80 rounds of sparring per fight. This time, I hardly did any. You know, I felt. I felt sharp I felt fresh you know I, I, I've hurt my body over the years in training really pushing myself I needed this rest I needed my body to just rejuvenate and I feel I'm ready to, to do some big things so Triller Fight Club does things a little bit differently it's unconventional it's unique they breathe fresh air into the sport but you were interviewed right before you were getting ready to make your ring walk by our very own Ashley Haas what was that like being interviewed as you getting ready to walk to the ring yeah, that's never happened before. But it was nice, you know. Quite pre-fight, I'm quite relaxed. I'm calm. I know what's going to happen in the ring. So interviewing me before it was nice. I told, I told her exactly how I felt. I went out there and did exactly what I said I was going to do. So coming into this fight with Joe Fournier, I want to know because after the fight was over, for those that didn't see. You, you called, called out Tyson, Tyson Fury, so, so what I want to know, because I'm you know, curious, did you have Tyson Fury's name in your mind even before you fought Joe Fournier? It was sort of the thing like, let me see how I feel, let me see how I perform, and then if I'm good and I feel great, then I want him. It's been in my mind for a long time, since 2013 when we were uh, scheduled to fight. Uh, the fight didn't happen, I got an injury. I've always wanted that fight and I've seen him go from strength to strength. He's got better and better and his reputation's got there. He's the lineal heavyweight champion of the world. So many people believe he's number one. And if I'm going to come back into the sport of boxing in a real fight against, you know, someone special, that is the guy I know I can beat. I know his style. I know what he does well. And my attributes don't work for his style. 
and uh, I think him and his team know that. I think maybe they think I'm a little old, so they probably will take the fight. But I'm, I'm looking for the biggest fight out there, and you don't get any bigger than the six foot nine um, undefeated Tyson Fury. My final question to you, David, play devil's advocate here. What if he says he has a matchup against Deontay Wilder in October? What if he says you need one more fight? Do you have a name that you would go ahead and go after to be able to then get to Tyson Fury? I'd only come back for Tyson Fury. Because in my mind, I don't want to. Sh I don't want to show him what I've got. You know, I was able to win this fight without showing the haymaker. I don't want him to know what I've got left. I want to. I want to surprise him on the night. David, hey, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and go over to my right. We're